Well, it's been a while since <clears throat> I've ran the Spartan since the Oxidine Dominator came in. So I decided to go ahead and grab the Spartan and bring it out here for a rip. I felt like it needed some love. So I've got some uh, 6,500 milliamp um, 150C SMC battery packs in it. I've since I have put the RC boat bits um, trim tabs on, I really haven't tested it. And I've got the Oxidine, that is a 45 mil by 1.4 pitch. So right now we've got the Leopard motor in it. And um, I thought instead of trying big props, I wanted to try smaller props to see if I could get the RPMs up. So our goal here is to not flip the boat. Yesterday we flipped the catamaran and that was a little unfortunate I've got it trimmed down about a millimeter heavy on one side probably got to adjust the steering trim yeah there we go got it going good now it's probably running too wet I just I didn't want to risk it. I wanted to be able to run it pretty high. I've had these batteries charged up since the weekend. Today is Tuesday. That's a small prop, so maybe I don't have to worry as much about um, like bringing the front end up with the bigger props. That's a full speed hit right there. Full speed. Full speed. Yeah, it's just burying the nose. All right, I'm gonna bring it in and see if I can adjust the trim tabs. I didn't bring any tools with me. At least I don't think. Let me check my pockets. I don't think I brought any Allen wrenches with me out here to the pond. All right, I'm gonna see if I can I can force them up a little. All right, not bad. I got the trim tabs moved just a smidge. Now I do have 6,500 mile packs in here, so those are heavy. They're all the way at the front, and I've got the stinger trimmed about a mil negative. And now I only have the right hand side trim tabs down level with the water. The others are actually up a little. So let's see if that does anything. Oh yeah. A lot better. It still gets a little crazy. Yeah. It can get out of control even with that small prop. I think a lot of it has to do with the disturbance of the water. Do a full speed rip here. I do not want to go get the canoe today. I do not want to get the canoe today. That is, I will not be having fun. That is about half throttle. Do some quick rips. So see, I actually have negative trim angle on that on the rear strut, and it's still trying to hop up out of the water. So the trim tabs, the settings of the trim tabs are what are extremely important. And what I, the main adjustment on what I just did was the left hand side. It's the side that really doesn't affect it much. But I bumped them up, and now it's not running as wet as it was before. This is such a fun boat. I love the deep V on it because it bites and it turns. It looks beautiful. If it wasn't so cold out here, I'd be making adjustments. I do have the GPS inside, so we will be able to see somewhat of a top speed. Oh, 
I wanted to see like if I could really just run it real hard if the ESC could withstand it. Because what I noticed on my Dominator is when I was thinking, when I thought that the batteries were running down and it was kicking off on a, uh, on a low voltage cutout, it wasn't. It was kicking out on a thermal overload. So because the water is so cold here in the winter time, the heat sink on the top of the motor, when I check it, is showing me one temperature. But I can smell the electronics. So that's what I had figured that out the other day because um, if I let it sit for about five minutes, it would kick back on and run again. So once it cooled down, the internal switch inside the, the ESC would cool down. It would allow it to operate again. Yeah, the 45-14 here is pretty good. Spartan is such a cool boat. I wish they, I wish somebody would make this exact replica in a fiberglass model. I would buy that. That would be awesome. I'm getting on with it. Yeah, these big milliamp packs, man, they just, they last. This is seven minutes of runtime here so far. Woo. Full trigger. Oh, there it is. Low voltage cut off. Okay. Either that or it overheated. Let's see. Yep, low voltage. Good deal. Not bad. All right. I'll go ahead and check temps. Cool, no smoke. I was so used to smoke from the uh, from the catamaran. Let's see. Wow, 81, no problem at all. All right, I wanted to see this because I had made these jumpers. Okay, 125. These are 6.5 mil. And then these are probably pretty hot. Yeah, 152. That's where it reduces from 6.5 down to 6 mil. Batteries, 100 degrees, beautiful. Let's see what the old Leopard motor is. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Not even a hundred. Capacitors. These capacitors. Okay, not bad. Hey, and look. <clears throat> we got 51 miles an hour here in the tiny little pond. That ain't bad. I'm pretty happy with 51 miles an hour. You know? Um, so, yeah, I've got the 150C SMCs. These are the 6500s. And I want to show you... Um, see if you can tell the strut angle i'm holding the boat pretty much straight up and down and i've got about a mil and a half a downward angle on it so i was doing a lot of research <clears throat> and see this this is what i mean by i was able to knock one of the the trim tabs up so if you look at the outer the outer is pretty much level with the bottom of the boat right but the inner i, I knocked it up and i was able to knock these up a little bit almost they're a little bit below whole line i'm gonna say they're they're a mil and a half below the whole line and uh, i was trying to compensate for the torque roll but um i was watching another video on a spartan and um he was talking about the the prop and where the strut exits the back of the boat how low it is and when the when it gets up on the prop the strut is so low there's not much of the keel of the boat in the water so the boat, if it's not balanced like 100% perfectly inside, that's what makes it start to do the chine walk. So what they say is if you bring the strut up, like literally drill the hole in the back of the hull and move your stuffing tube up, that will lower the keel of the boat. It'll keep the hull of the boat in the water more 
And then they say if you move it over about two to three mil <clears throat> towards the right, that will help compensate for the torque roll. It's something a few people I've seen in forums they talk about, they've done. I don't know if I'm going to do it. With the number of boats that I have now, I don't really see a problem or an issue with doing it that way. But 51 miles an hour, I'm pretty satisfied with this thing. You know, um, if I was able to just hold it down, I could probably get a lot faster. But it starts to get crazy out of control. So short of putting some like three inch TFL like trim tabs on it that shoot them way out the back and extend the rudder. You know, I think the rudder needs to be about another two inches longer, deeper in the water. There's a whole lot of things you'd have to change to try to get this thing to be stable at that speed. But, you know, you can't move the batteries any further forward. They're, they're maxed out. And I've got big packs in it right now to see if it would help that situation. But other than that, that was a pretty good run. It's uh, starting, the sun's starting to go down. So I'm going to go ahead. My dog is in the background. She's going crazy. She hears me out here talking. He's like, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Well, thank y'all for hanging out with me this evening. I got off work, wanted to run the boat, and uh, I got to do it. So thank y'all for watching. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And uh, be sure to give the video a thumbs up before you leave. Peace out.